Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got three big stories out of the science journals. We'll hit solar storm ozone destruction, impact on the heart, and geomagnetic triggering of earthquake activity. We've also got an odd light effect in the sky and weather forecasts, and we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Few M-class solar flares erupted from the departing sunspots, while the complexity of the ones turning into face Earth surges to high watch levels. We're going to be eyes open on it here this coming week, and the flaring, as you can see here, has been on the rise with the sunspot development, but the biggest so far are from the group turning out of view. The big ones on the north have just come together here in the days before directly facing Earth, likely to be tomorrow, and they have grown and developed significant complexity. As the southern spots depart to the right, these northern spots take over the top watch for the sun right now, and we've zoomed in on the magnetic complexity to find beta delta class magnetism and include a gamma class with the interaction in the trailing group. We've got eyes open for more flares. Weather Channel is out with their summer forecast. It's fairly generalized for the United States, but suggests heat in the northwest and chillier temperatures in the southeast. They've also given a precipitation forecast for the same July to September period. That would be bad news for the already drought-stricken areas out west. Up next, Spaceweather.com is reporting an unusual inner 9 degree sun halo, and indeed, the pyramidal ice crystals that cause it aren't something expected in cirrus clouds. Lots of unexpected anomalies these days though, isn't there? We're off to our top story, starting with the geomagnetic quakes. They find that after strong geomagnetic variations, like those due to solar storms, when that deviation reaches down to California, we see an uptick in quakes in the following 2-10 to 10 days. Longer term, the increased vulnerability of Earth in the ongoing magnetic pole shift will drive more of those geomagnetic variations to California latitudes. Up next, excellent look here at solar storm impact to heart rate. They found that it can actually begin before the solar storm reaches Earth at the onset of the flare and the resultant juicing up of the atmosphere by the flaring X-rays. And it can last for a day or two after the solar storm subsides. Another solid cardiac and solar connection. Lastly on the article front, Solar storm ozone destruction has been wildly underestimated. Turns out they've been leaving the most powerful electrons out of their models since they're such a small fraction of the particle bombardment, but they actually drive 16 to 17 percent ozone reductions all by themselves. This ozone impact of solar storms thing has really made strides in the last two years and paints a pretty scary picture as Earth weakens its magnetic field in the ongoing pole shift allowing more of those energetic electrons and protons in to destroy even more ozone. Folks, we are two days from this month's Observer Review e-magazine issue. Remember, you get a monthly volume and then a special release every single month and access to every issue ever when you sign up for the only publication dedicated to the sun, the pole shift in the ongoing Earth disaster cycle. Sign up at the link below. And also don't forget, a lot is happening at Observer Ranch. Blacksmithing class is next weekend. Situational awareness prepper super event to end the month. That'll be a good one. Then we've got pole shift conferences and other special events the rest of the season as well. Check out the events pages. Register and book your stay at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.